Your Grace, Bishop Sani Ibrahim Azar, Bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Jordan and the Holy Land. Your Eminence, Archbishop Sohail Diwani of the Episcopal Diocese in Jerusalem. Your Grace, Bishop, Bishop Coadjutor Hussam Naoum uh, of the Episcopal Diocese in Jerusalem. Reverend Dr. Mitri Rahib, President of Dar al Kalima University College. Reverend Dr. Donald Binder, Chaplain to the Archbishop and Reverend Dr. Richard Sewell, Dean of the St. George Cathedral. Dear friends at the Philadelphia Episcopal Cathedral, Your Grace Bishop Daniel Gutierrez, Your Grace Bishop Patricia Devonport, Dean Judy Sullivan, uh, Canon Sean and Canon Matthew, dear sisters and brothers here in person uh, and those watching us live in many locations around the globe. Welcome to the 14th annual simulcast service connecting our two parts of the world together, Bethlehem, Palestine and the United States of America. This year, we celebrate this service in non-ordinary circumstances amidst a global pandemic that created new realities, forcing us to change the way we live and how our religious services. We certainly send our best wishes and prayers to all those who are suffering because of this pandemic or who lost dear ones. It is nonetheless a special occasion as we welcome for the first time amongst us Bishop Hussam Naoum in his new role as Bishop Coadjutor and certainly wish him the best in this new role. We say in Arabic, Khayru Khalaf li Khayri Salaf, an excellent successor to an excellent predecessor. We look forward to working with you in the coming years. It is also a special occasion since this year for the first time, the service is co-celebrated from the Episcopal Cathedral in Philadelphia, having taken place in the last 13 years from the National Cathedral in Washington. For me personally, Philadelphia holds a special place, having studied there and lived there for three years. We are excited for this new partnership and I have certainly enjoyed preparing the service with Dean Matthew. But we are here to celebrate Christmas, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. It is about him. He is the real reasons why we are here. Yes, the spread of COVID-19 has imposed a new occupation. Streets are empty, shops are closed. There are no pilgrims here in Bethlehem, no mass celebrations and no festivals in the manger square. There is sadness, worry and anxiety, and the economic consequences of the lack of tourism are very harsh. However, maybe this is not too unfamiliar to us in Palestine. For millennia, People here have rarely known a time apart from occupation or hardships. Makes me wonder, is this our destiny in Bethlehem and Palestine? Is this the normal Christmas? The situation today is not that different from the times of Jesus. And there is hope today in the announcement carried forward by the shepherds working the fields near Bethlehem. God has chosen to visit our planet to be born in human likeness among the occupied in the shadow of a harsh empire, among those living in fear and anxiety, among those who are marginalized and rejected. Still, we call it the gospel, meaning the good news. So come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord, the baby of Bethlehem. Oh, 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 
Dear people of God, in this Christmas season, let it be our duty and delight to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in the manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until his glorious redemption, brought to us by his holy child Jesus, and let us make this season glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for his church here in Pennsylvania, in the Holy Land, and in the world. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, 
let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and that whole multitude which no one can number whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. And now, for all these petitions, let us pray in the words which Christ himself has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. القراءة الأولى مأخوذة من سفر تكوين من الأصحاح الثالث مبتدئا من العدد الأول وحتى نهاية العدد الخامس عشر وكانت الحية أحيل جميع حيوانات البرية التي عملها الرب الإله فقالت للمرأة أحقا قال الله لا تأكلا من كل شجر الجنة فقالت المرأة للحية من ثمر شجر الجنة نأكل وأما ثمر الشجرة التي في وسط الجنة فقال الله لا تأكلا منه ولا تمساه لئلا تموتا فقالت الحية للمرأة لن تموتا بل الله عالم أنه يوم تأكلان منه تنفتح أعماء وتكونون كالله عارفين الخير والشر فرأت المرأة أن الشجرة جيدة للأكل وأنها بهجة للعيون وأن الشجرة شهية للنظر فأخذت من ثمرها وأكلت وأعطت رجلها أيضا معها فأكل فانفتحت عينهما وعلما أنهما عريانان فخاطا أوراق تين وصنعا لأنفسهما مآزر وسمعا صوت الرب الإله ماشيا في الجنة عند هبوب ريح النهار فاختبأ آدم وامرأته من وجه الرب الإله في وسط شجر الجنة فنادى الرب الإله آدم وقال له أين أنت؟ فقال سمعت صوتك في الجنة فخشيت لأني عريان فاختبأت فقال من أعلمك أنك عريان هل أكلت من الشجرة التي أوصيتك أن لا تأكل منها فقال آدم المرأة التي جعلتها مهي هي أعطتني من الشجرة فأكلت فقال الرب الإله للمرأة ما هذا الذي فعلت فقالت المرأة الحية غرتني فأكلت فقال الرب الإله للحية لأنك فعلت هذا ملعونة أنت من جميع البهائم ومن جميع وحوش البرية على بطنك تسعين وترابا تأكلين كل أيام حياتك وأضع عداوة بينك وبين المرأة وبين نسلك ونسلها هو يصحق رأسك وأنت تصحقين عقبه آمين أيها المسيح ابن الله يا من تجسدت لأجلنا المجد لك 
القراءة الثانية مأخوذة من سفر أشعيا الإصحاح أربعين الأعداد ومن واحد لحداش عزوا عزوا شعبي يقولوا إلهكم طيبوا قلب أورشليم ونادوها بأن جهادها قد كمل أن إثمها قد عفي عنه أنها قد قبلت من يد الرب ضعفين عن كل خطاياها صوت صارخ في البرية أعدوا طريق الرب قوموا في القفر سبيلا لإلهنا كل وطأ يرتفع وكل جبل وأكمة ينخفض ويصير المعوج مستقيما والعراقيب سهلا فيعلن مجد الرب ويراه كل بشر جميعا لأن فم الرب تكلم صوت قائل نادي فقال بماذا أنادي كل جسد عشب وكل جماله كزهر الحقل يبس العشب ذبل الزهر لأن نفخة الرب هبت عليه حقا الشعب عشب يبس العشب ذبل الزهر وأما كلمة إلهنا فتثبت إلى الأبد 
على جبل عال اصعد يا مبشرة صهيون ارفعي صوتك بقوة يا مبشرة أورشليم ارفعي لا تخافي قولي لمدن يهوذا هو ذا إلهك هو ذا السيد الرب بقوة يأتي وذراعه تحكم له هو ذا أجرته معه وعملته قدامه قراع يرعى قطيعه بذراعه يجمع الحملان وفي حضنه يحملها ويقود المردعات آمين Let us pray. Consoling God, who speaks tenderly to all your people, when we are exiled, your voice strengthens us, your love sustains us. When we are captive, you come as the Good Shepherd and liberate us. In all our exile and in all our captivity, gather us and lead us. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, we pray. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God had sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Here ends the lesson. Redeeming God, you came to us as an infant, homeless, helpless, and vulnerable, yet safe in the loving embrace of Mary. Wrap our world in your arms, that we may grow strong to care for the needs of the oppressed, the poor, the destitute, and all who suffer in this world. In the name of Jesus, desire of nations, we pray. Amen. Mary had a
A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. Here ends the lesson. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. بشارة الإنجيل لوقا البشير وفي تلك الأيام صدر أمر من أغسطس قيصر بأن يكتتب كل المسكونة وهذا الاكتتاب الأول جرى إذ كان كيرينيوس والي سوريا فذهب الجميع ليكتتبوا كل واحد إلى مدينته فصعد يوسف أيضا من الجليل من مدينة الناصرة إلى اليهودية إلى مدينة داوود التي تدعى بيت لحم لكونه من بيت داوود وعشيرته ليكتتب مع مريم امرأته المخطوبة وهي حبلة وبينما هما هناك تمت أيامها لتلد فولدت ابنها البكرة وقمطته وأضجعته في المذود إذ لم يكن لهما موضع في المنزل وكان في تلك الكورة رعاة متبدين يحرسون حراسات الليل على رعيتهم وإذا ملاك الرب وقف بهم ومجد الرب أضاء حولهم فخافوا خوفا عظيما فقال لهم الملاك لا تخافوا فها أنا أبشركم بفرح عظيم يكون لجميع الشعب إنه ولد لكم اليوم في مدينة داوود مخلص هو المسيح الرب وهذه العلامة تجدون طفلا مقمطا مجعا في مذود 
وظهر بغتة مع الملاك جمهور من الجند السماوي مسبحين الله وقائلين المجد لله في الأعالي وعلى الأرض السلام وبالناس المصرة إنجيل الرب التسبيح لك أيها المسيح بسم الاب والابن والروح القدس الى واحد امين my dear friends greetings in the name of our lord jesus christ to all those present here in bethlehem at this beautiful worship service in the lutheran christmas church welcome also to our friends viewing online and to those gathered for worship in Philadelphia. I am especially grateful to Bishop Daniel Gortieris for arranging for this simulcast to be held in the cathedral there for the first time, marking the beginning of our companion relationship with the Diocese of Pennsylvania. We thank you and all our Lutheran and Anglican partners in America for standing in solidarity with us Christians in the Holy Land as we look forward to our celebration of Christ's birth in the week ahead. This year's Christmas celebration will be both a sad one yet a hopeful one. In our region, as in many places around the world, people and families are suffering from physical, emotional, and economic effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Bethlehem and other parts of the Holy Land have been hit especially hard by the last of these consequences. Many families here had arranged their lives to save the millions of pilgrims who normally visit the holy sites of our Christian faith each year. They had worked as shopkeepers and tour guides and had served in restaurants and hotels. Now these families are struggling. They have little or no income because there are no pilgrims visiting here. And so they have no way to pay their bills. Some even have no way to pay for food. Yet in the midst of these sad times, Christmas brings to us a message of hope. Here we must remember that Jesus was born during a period when many suffered. People at that time faced both the Roman occupation and widespread corruption. The world was a very sinful place. Yet the story of Christ's birth reminds us that God did not give up on the world. God did not give up on his people. On the contrary, God came to them in the flesh, showing his loving kindness to all his children, as St. John writes. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. In the early life that followed, Jesus brought truth and healing into the world. Through his wise words, and loving deeds. He went on to give up his life in order that we might have a new life, rising again victorious from the grave. He then 
bestowed upon his people the gift of the Holy Spirit, empowering us to continue serving the world in his name. In these past nine months, this is what we have seen. Through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, God has led our brothers and sisters from around the world to lend their support to Christians in the Holy Land, much as the early churches in Greece and Asia Minor contributed to the relief of the church in Jerusalem. From, there, from this general support, we have been able to help struggling families in the Holy Land make ends meet during these difficult times. And so we are grateful for the many generous contribu contributors who have allowed our work with the sick, the poor, and the suffering to continue. You have helped keep our hospitals and clinics open our rehabilitation centers running, and our schools continuing to teach our students. With the release of the COVID-19 vaccine this month, we look forward to celebrating Christmas this year with hopeful hearts for the start of a new life, both here and around the world. Likewise, we look forward with hopeful hearts to 2021 that the new year will bring a renewed commitment among the nations of the world to work for a just and lasting peace here in the land where Jesus was born. And so, in the midst of these sad yet hopeful times, I share with you the joy that springs from our celebration of Christ's birth in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago. As the angel announced to the shepherds, fear not, for lo, I bring you good tidings of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, who is Christ our Lord. In the light of this great Christmas hope, may God bless you all with many blessings this Christmas, and in the new year. Amen. Good morning, good afternoon. We want to welcome you to the service of Lessons and Carols. This is a time filled with hope as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. This service is a powerful symbol of the deep relationship between the Episcopal Diocese of Pennsylvania and the Diocese of Jerusalem. I want to welcome you once again, this historic Episcopal Diocese of Pennsylvania, the second oldest diocese in the Episcopal Church, filled with resilient, courageous, loving, and faithful people among 135 churches who seek to know Jesus and change the world. I'd like to give my thanks to Dean Judy Sullivan and this beautiful Philadelphia Episcopal Cathedral and your staff. Thank you very much, Dean Sullivan. And my sister, Bishop Patricia Davenport, and our siblings of the Lutheran Church here in Philadelphia. My deep thanks goes to the Diocese of Jerusalem. Archbishop Suhil, you are a friend, an inspiration, and you are a true shepherd. We, we are blessed by your presence with us in this journey. Bishop Hossam, thank you. I look forward to our journey together over the coming years. We have established a covenant between the Diocese of Pennsylvania and the Diocese of Jerusalem, and we will continue for years to come, and we will learn from each other. And this is the beginning of a beautiful, fruitful, and faithful relationship I want to also thank the Lutheran Christmas Church, Bishop Azar, 
and the Reverend Dr. Isaac. Uh, we consider you an adopted son of Philadelphia. And to celebrate, I'd like to announce the date of next year's service of Lessons and Carols, which will be December 18th, 2021. So as we continue, let us celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let us go forth with great hope because we know that Christ, the light, is breaking through in our lives and our hearts. God bless you. Most merciful God, we pray this day for the church, that sacred mystery, for its members around the world, and for all who seek your truth. May the bright star over Bethlehem guide us all to your enduring love. Lord, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, guide the nations of this world that spirit of truth and generosity may call us to see our reliance on one another and on you. We pray especially for those in positions of authority in the United States, in Palestine and Israel, and throughout your creation. Give justice to those who live under occupation and systems of racism and humbly reconcile the hearts of those who rely on their own power and privilege. Lord, hear our prayer. Healing Christ, be with our world as we wrestle with the coronavirus. Help us to care for our loved ones and strangers alike. 
equip our medical professionals and leaders with wisdom and endurance, and arouse the hearts of the careless. Guard those who confront economic distress and loneliness. Finally, let the light at the end of this dark tunnel be your true light, that we might see and know you were with us all along. Lord, hear our prayer. Resurrecting God, fill our minds with the faces of those we love but see no longer. May our grief be the mark of our love for them. And in your own time, call us home to be with you, that we might see them once again. Lord, hear our prayer.
It is not true that creation and the human family are doomed to destruction and loss. It is not true that we must accept inhumanity and discrimination, hunger and poverty, arrogance and suffering, disease and death. This is true. I have life. They may have life and have life abundantly. It is not true that violence and hatred should have the last word and that war and inequity rule forever. This is true. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting, the Prince of Peace. It is not true that we are meant to be victims of the powers of evil who seek to rule the world. This is true. To me is given authority in heaven and on earth. And lo, I am with you, even until the end of the world. It is not true that we must wait for those who are specially gifted, who are prophets of the church, before we can begin to make peace. This is true. true. I will pour out my spirit in all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. It is not true that our hopes for liberation of humankind, of justice, of human dignity and peace are not meant for this earth and for our enjoyment. This is true. The hour comes, and now it is, that the true worshippers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. O oh God, you, who, you caused that holy night here in Bethlehem many years ago and shined with the brightness of the true light for generations to come. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And let us receive the blessing of our Lord. يبارككم الرب ويحرسكم يضيء الرب بوجه عليكم ويرحمكم يرفع الرب وجهه عليكم ويمنحكم سلاما ابديا بسم الاب والابن والروح القدس امين beloved to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. 
Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.